Here is an example where we want to realize a state machine. The example that we're using here is a parity check example. So what we have here in our system is that we want to check if a sequence that is put as input to the system has even or odd parity. This means that we need to check if the number of ones that we have received in the past is even or if it is odd. So uh, a block diagram of our system can be as follows. So we want to realize this system as a state machine. We have as input i0, i1, i2, i3 and so on. And as output we have z0, z1, z2 and so on. And we define the output as the kth output bit is even if the sum of the previous inputs bits are even. And the output bit is odd if the sum of the previous input bits are odd. So the state machine that we want to realize consists of an input set. So the input set here is zeros or ones. So this is what we can get as input. We have an output set and the output set is the set uh, with even and odd. And we have a state set which consists of, in this case, two states. One state is when all the previous input bits sums to an even number. And the other state is when all the previous input bits sums to an odd number. In order to define our state transition function and our output function, we use our state transition graph. So we write our state transition graph. So we have already defined that we have two different states, one state that we defined as even and one state that we call odd. So these states will be used to remember what is the parity of the previous input uh, inputs that we had to our system. So if we are in state even and we get a zero as an input, we maintain in state even. And the output here will still be even because we just had another zero. If we instead get a one as an input, we will go to the state that we call odd. And now the output here will be odd because now we had an an odd number of ones as input in total. So now we are done with the even state. Now we have to go to the odd state and go through all the possible inputs in this state. So if we get a zero as input, we stay in the odd state. And we still have an odd number of ones. If we now instead have a one as an input, we will go to the state that we call even. And now we will have an even number of inputs in total. So this is the uh, state transition graph that we have for our problem. But we have a digital system. And what we need to do when we have a digital system is that we need to translate this to zeros and ones. So what we need to translate is the output. And we also need to translate the states. And we can do this basically in any way we want, but we can say now that that even will be a zero and odd will be a one. Which means now that we can, we can rewrite our state transition graph by using the names that we have now given to the states and to the input uh, or to the outputs. So if we are in the state that we call zero and we get a zero as input, we now get a zero as output as well. If we have a one as input, we get a one as output. In the state that we now call one, if we have a zero as input, we have a one as output. And if we have a one as input, we will have a zero as output output. So now we have a straight state transition graph with only digital notation, both for the naming of the states and also for how we want to denote our outputs.